to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And I am back once again. It is a Wednesday morning, and I am tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And uh, what we're going to do today is going to be just a little uh, different. Um, I know I need to get a podcast out. My goal is to get one out every week. Uh, But I have been so busy this week. Um, I haven't even scheduled any classes. I am getting ready to go out of town, headed uh, to the communist uh, country of, uh, of Oregon, um, I'm for those of you that have followed me and have listened to the podcast for quite a while, you know that not only do I like firearms, but I like to run and I sign myself up for these crazy ultra marathons that take place out through the through the forest, through the on trails. Um, and this one it just so happens to be on the coast and uh it is a hundred K. I'm running from Gold Beach and I'm gonna run toward California, right between Highway one oh one and the coast on the um, and the coastline right on the, what they call the Oregon Coast Trail. So I'll be out there. And if there's any listeners that are out there, uh, you know, uh, say hi. Uh, feel free to say hi. I, I, I'll probably be driving through your neck of the woods. Um, I don't have time to stop, uh, but you can shoot me a text. You can get a hold of me. You can call me. You can text me. Uh, say hi. Wish me well in your race. Maybe you're just in Oregon and you just say, hey, I'm in Oregon. I listen to the podcast, um, safe travels, or whatever you want to say. You can call me. You can text me. Area code 620-794-6223. It's area code 620-794-6223. Uh, you can get a hold of me. I'll be doing a lot of driving. And uh, so, yeah, I'd welcome a call. I'd welcome the text message. That would be absolutely uh, fantastic. And I don't know, maybe we'll get some Patriot Defense fans down there and you guys can, uh, yeah, cheer for me. Yay, go Todd. I, it's not that kind of race, but whatever. You could do that if you want. I'm not going to. Just wish me luck. I am a little nervous. This is a long distance. And I'm kind of getting a little freaked out the closer I get to this. I will be running the race on Saturday. So that is why I've been busy uh, uh, packing my stuff and, and getting some last minute things together. Um, um, my youngest son has started online schooling this week. And so we're kind of working the kinks out of that. It's just been, um, it's been pretty busy. So what I am going to do uh, today, or what I want to do today for the podcast, because I do want to get you guys out of podcast, something, right, is I've been doing this podcast for a, lost, for a long time. I mean, I've been doing it back as far as like 2017, and I think there's a bunch of episodes that came out before then as well that, uh, well, they no longer exist. Uh, they were they were okay episodes, but the, the audio wasn't great. In fact, the audio might be a little, little off on this one as well, but I... Um, so I, I did away with it. So I've been doing the podcast for quite a while. And so uh, back in the day, we used to do, we used to have a bunch of guys uh, get together, uh, three or four guys, we'd get together and we'd do this podcast. And it was a lot of fun. And I, I, I kind of scrounged through the old episodes and I found one where it talks about, I, I did it with a buddy of mine named uh, Dean. He used to do the podcast with me quite a bit. And we, uh, he had one where he questioned, where he was asking me questions and kind of interviewing me about a self-defense situation I had. Now, if you've listened to all the podcast episodes and stuff, you've probably heard this story again, but I'll check it out. It's, it's kind of fun to, 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 to re-listen to it. Now, I said, you know, we were early on, so the audio wasn't the best. I had different equipment, so don't judge me on that. Please don't judge me on that. Um, it has gotten better, I hope. I hope you can hear it. I know I can. But I'm going to go ahead and re-upload uh, this um, uh, this uh, this episode, this old episode. We're gonna. I, I thought I needed a fancy name for this, right? So what we're gonna do is, and I don't do this very often. I don't repeat play episodes very often. But every now and then, I need to get one out though. So what am I gonna call this? I'm calling this one the Tactical Reload. We are gonna have a tactical reload for this week's episode. And you're gonna sit down and listen to it if you get a chance and enjoy it and even if you've already heard it man i sat down and listened to this the other day and when i was trying to choose one to do this is fantastic it's 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 good listening to it so um kind of kind of reminds me of the past and where where i came from and if you've been with me that long i do want to thank you so uh 
here we go. We're just going to, we are just going to get right into it here. So here you go. Here is your tactical reload. And we are back. We are tucked away in the high desert of Southern Idaho, tucked away in the war room. It is dark outside. This is a late show. I don't know what episode we're on anymore. And again, yeah, I don't uh, really care. Hey, yeah. Dean, do you remember? Uh, I, do, I have a bad case of CRS. I th- I think we are in episode that, 98. Remember, can't remember crap. Can't remember crap. We are in episode 98. Okay, make it so. Make it so. 98. We'll have a big party and two more episodes. We'll be up to our 100th episode. And oh, yeah. Just because we'll, I want to have a freaking party. We'll give away a free five-star uh, review of on iTunes. Dean's a little preoccupied. He's <laughs> over there. I've got a bunch of knives out, and he's got a knife in each hand. And I'm not, he's going to cut himself before the Seriously, end. Seriously, I probably will. <laughs> before the end. I knew Dean liked guns. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I didn't know he liked knives so much. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy edge weapons. I I, 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 I can sharpen the crap out of anything. I got the goods to, to put a razor's edge on, on knives. And, a yeah. uh, free hat, a free hat, a mm. free, free Patriot defense hat <laughs> to one listener if Dean accidentally cuts himself <laughs> during the podcast today. <laughs> Because he's about he's he, now now he's going for the other. Then we'll, one. Go to the, we'll go to the K bar here, and we'll 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 combine that with the dart, <laughs> the dart, and uh, oh yeah, that's that's it. I yeah. have a feeling that Dean's gonna go home and order some new knives. Right? How does I'm it feel go... to hold a two hundred fifty dollar knife in your hand? Oh my gosh, feels good, don't it? It. Uh, I think I just peed a little. <laughs> Enjoy that. Anyhow, we're gonna. This isn't the knife podcast. <laughs> self defense. This is the self defense. This is the. This is the Patriot Defense podcast. I'm fresh off the range. You might be able to hear it in my voice. Fresh off the indoor range. <laughs> we had about. Um, we had like 23, 23 people show up today. So it was a good sized class. It was a fun class. So I'm gonna get right into this. This is yeah. what I did. Second Amendment related. Yeah. I did a class today. Oh, good, good, good. I had a class. Lots of nice class. Uh, lots of lots of good questions. Um, interesting guns in the class. I had a couple yeah. of high points. I had a little tiny 22 with a tip up barrel on it. That was really interesting. Who, what? Who made that thing? What? What brand was it? The, the 22. The 22. I believe yeah. it was a Taurus. And it, oh, really? Yeah. It had a little tip up barrel. A little tiny 22. A little tiny short barrel. Uh, so it was a semi-auto. A semi-auto. And it had a magazine. It had a magazine. And, it held and a like, tip-up barrel. And a tip-up barrel. It's pretty interesting. Huh. It was, it was an could, interesting... Could the, the person wield it like, a, like it's supposed up, to be? She or? ended up shooting it pretty well. Uh, the slide was really rough to pull back, so she had to oh, really? load the magazine, yeah. put the magazine in, tip up the barrel, load one in the barrel, cl- close the barrel, and then she could fire it without actually having to... So she didn't have to actuate the slide in no. order to cock the thing or no. anything, huh? No, pretty because it's a hammer fired deal. Gotcha. It was a pretty interesting little gun, and by the time we got done with class, she was actually uh, pretty pretty proficient with it. Another thing we had, and I'm going to throw this out there, and Dean doesn't know I'm going to bring it up. Uh oh. We didn't come up in our pre podcast meeting. <laughs> is a gentleman there had a uh, had a Kimber a Kimber nine millimeter. But it was a, one of the subcompact or one of the cub, uh, the compact. I've read about those. That thing ran like crap. Did it really? It ran. It, no, it jammed not Kimber. Up. It jammed up consistently. In fact, he put it down and he he grabbed my um, MMP 2.0 and started shooting it instead. Oh no! Yeah, he said he. But it, I think there's a break-in period, and he'd only put about thirty rounds. Oh, through. okay, okay. But yeah. it was it was it was still okay. It was freaking garbage. That's oh man, I've 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 read about that thing on uh, on the Kimber website. I, once in a while, I'll troll over there just to see what's new and beautiful uh, with Kimber because they make gorgeous 1911s, and uh, we we all know your feelings about the 1911 there, Todd. Yeah, old, wrinkly, and <laughs> I sent you that meme, man. That was awesome. That made me laugh so hard. <laughs> but uh, uh, the 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 meme had uh, had uh, 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 three young ladies in swimsuits. One looked like uh one of the girls from parent trap with a daphne with a, off scooby-doo or something yeah she was just oh, <laughs> fell out of the ugly tree and hit every branch coming down she was representing she glock. was labeled glock <laughs> and then there were two uh very very fit very um uh uh, uh, uh young ladies say it busty very busty wearing <laughs> wearing bikinis and they were hk and sig 
<laughs> and then right below them was a picture of uh, 80 year old grandma. An 80 year old, yes, one of our seasoned citizens <laughs> who was wearing a, a sweatsuit <laughs> lifting weights. <laughs> deadlifting. Doing, yeah, deadlifting. And she was the 1911. <laughs> I, will, I will say this, though the guy that was the best shot in the class, yeah. full size um, Colt, Colt, or Ruger, Colt, full size Colt, Colt 1911. Nice. Won that contest. Classic. Won that contest, so he did. Uh, he did good. They, they, they shined in the long run, but I've uh-huh. never been real impressed with those uh, those those compact 1911 that's that Kimbers make. They they just don't run. Yeah, well, in that, my mind, they that, just don't run. That nine millimeter is a completely different critter altogether. Even the 45 doesn't run. I've had no? those in my class. Have either. you really? Yeah. Oh, but they look so good. They look. Everything looks nice. They make. That's why they sell them. They can look. They can right. run Serious. like crap, but they look like. They're right. nice. People will buy them. And the one that I got, uh, I should say, I, I bought it about, well, what year is it? Gosh, I got it back in the early 2000s. And, it, and at that that time, it was it was very, very expensive. It, it, um, I, I, um, and it looks good. The bluing on the thing is absolutely gorgeous. because you don't do anything with and it, but it's, it's just a, in the safe. Right, but now when I shoot it, you know, it, it runs great. The trigger is just fantastic. It's like butter. It it, it It's crisp. If you've got a gun light. that's nice, why don't you carry it? I don't want to wreck the gorgeous mirror finished bluing on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can re-blue them. Oh, I know, but not... Oh, the blue job on it. it... <laughs> oh. The bluing on it is fantastic. <laughs> wow, that's going to kick us up to a... Totally different rating. Sorry. On iTunes. Oh, this is supposed to be a family show. I'm <laughs> yeah. so sorry. Hopefully, the kids weren't bellied oh up gosh. to the freaking speaker listening uh, to the Tom <clears throat> Dean Patriot Defense podcast. Please don't tell my bishop <laughs> <laughs> or your wife. So anyhow, let's change the subject. Anyway, right. Uh, so I've got a moral. What's upcoming? I got a moral dilemma. What's that? Whenever I have a class, uh-huh. someone leaves things behind. For example, someone today left a coffee cup behind. Uh, and a pair of earmuffs. They weren't the electronic ones, but they're uh, pair of earmuffs. Yeah. Somebody leaves. I've got two or three or maybe even four magazines, spare magazines that people for, left behind. Do you know what for, they go to? Yeah, for yeah. guns that I don't even have. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so those might be good listener prizes. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll give those out. Um, about two months ago, about two months ago, yeah. someone left this really nice gun range bag put out by 511 it's huge yeah i price these out it's probably a 140 forty dollar bag it was empty for a bag yeah very nice bag very nice better than wait, dumping wait, wait. them all into my freaking backpack wait 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 it was empty it was empty why did the guy bring an empty bag i don't know class? i don't care but he left the bag here huh. and I'm, i was concerned i was like i need to get this I need to get this bag back to this yeah, guy. Yeah, that's nice. So he's probably missing it. He called me up and he goes, "Hey, is there a bag over there?" I said, "Yeah, there's a bag." I said, "I put it in my my old my scout. I put it in the vehicle, my truck with me." I said, "I can I I work I, I run around in Twin, Kimberly, Burley, wherever you're from. We can get yeah. this back to you. I'll meet you somewhere." Yeah. He said, "Oh, don't don't worry about it. I'll get it." I said, "Okay, well, whenever you're ready, just call me." He said, "Well, it'll be a little while." So I'm thinking a week. I'm thinking two right? weeks. It's been. Two months. So I'm thinking about this bag gathering dust in the in my truck. Yeah. So So is well, is uh, at what point do do you become common law married to this bag because he left it? Last night. Last night. Okay, that's yeah, <laughs> fair enough. There it is. My <laughs> wife uh, saw me in the living room loading this bag up with guns and magazines and it's a beautiful bag. I even have pockets that I haven't even filled with stuff. Wow, it's so big. Well, that's perfect for your class thing because you got to you got to bring class. all your stuff with you. Yeah. So I've started using it. My wife's uh-huh. like, "Man, that's not right." And I'm like, "Why? Why isn't it right? When does it become mine? Right? When, yeah. Or when can I use it until they actually care enough to want it back? If I leave a hundred and forty, hundred and sixty dollar bag somewhere, damn, I'm going to go get it. Right? Yeah. Right. I'm going to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I started using it. It worked out fantastic. Oh, I bet today. it did. I stacked ammo in there. I, I put, I mean, I had like seven or eight handguns in there. I had, it's got pockets for magazines. It was, I never bought pockets myself. for paperwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah? It was awesome. Nice. It was, so, I don't know. I've got myself a new bag, it looks like. Well, you've done uh, uh, your 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 due diligence trying to get a hold of the fella. And... I would hope so. Yeah. It's a beautiful bag. Serious. I even came up um, a couple years ago, someone left a blanket here. 
They were cold in the classroom. It was a really nice blanket. I got this new dog, and I needed yeah. to put a blanket on the seat. So I used it. <laughs> That's your dog blanket. So now it's a really nice so, wool blanket. It's now oh, a dog blanket. Wow, yeah. Common it's law not, marriage. To your, I don't your... know where the damn thing's been. I'm not going to put it on my bed. I'll give it to the dog. <laughs> right. So uh, thank you for the blanket. Uh, those people, I don't even right. know. That was like two years ago. Um, what else people left? Jackets. Yeah. Coats. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, coffee cups. I have two or three of those. Lots of spare magazines, and now this gun bag. I'm waiting for someone to leave a gun. I, I can't believe that they would leave magazines, because... Oh, yeah. That's, that's a part of your... Uh, anyway. I've got know. a Glock magazine. I've got yeah. a Smith & Wesson magazine. I've got a HK USP magazine. And some of these magazines are like $40, $50 mags. They are. They're not cheap. They're not cheap. Yeah. So, I got them. Huh. Well, you know what doesn't use magazines? Revolvers. Revolvers. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to have One less thing you got to yeah. remember. That's why old... People like you, Dean, don't have to... That's why you like to shoot revolvers. Are you older than me? I don't know. How old are you, Dean? I, I was born in 76. Oh, crap. We're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, you guys didn't You guys didn't just... I don't think our listeners really care about some of this stuff. Uh, so, it's just me and Dean catching it. Man, I, right. I should have pushed play in right. a pre-podcast meeting. That, that was a, uh, some good conversation. That was, that you, yeah. yeah, that was some good conversation. Good points brought up, yeah. Next time. True. Next time, yeah. Okay, so um, what have you done this week, Second Amendment, or shooting or gun or reloading related, Dean? I can't even remember. Anything? Well, I'm carrying right now. Are you? I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, my. No, here, put on one of these knives real quick so you can give say me, that you're carrying Give me the broken stuff. revolver. Right. <laughs> I'll throw it at him. Oh, shoot. So that's all. That's all you didn't do anything. Yeah. Just yeah, work. You know, I and uh, worked and, and looked at those articles that you sent on, uh, you know, a couple of different things. Like like the one article was uh, about the NRA, the uh, the vaunted NRA, who apparently is paying board members who haven't shown up for several years. This uh, this article on, at one point said that there's a some lady I can't remember her name who gets uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars annually to be on the board of directors at the NRA. She hasn't even shown up for three years. So, yeah, there's your dollars at work right there. You know, I'm not super impressed with the NRA as of late. In fact, NRA yeah. to me stands for not really active. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I don't. Well, they, I don't. I just, they frustrate me. They're constantly hounding you for money. and They're doing that, and they're, they're starting to trade some freedoms for other freedoms. Yeah. And they're just not, I don't know. I'm going to say right now, NRA and the other organization is the um, Gun Owners of America. Yeah. I would go with the Gun Owners of America right now over the NRA because I feel like they represent me better than the, than the NRA does. There's yeah. a lot of stuff going on in the NRA. Um, I don't know. NRA is not for know. me. I'm not saying I hate the NRA because I don't, but it's not for me right well, now. We're grateful that we have organizations out there that are lobbying exactly. in our behalf to do these good things. Even My father was a huge, I, you want to call him a gun nut, but he was... Uh, Big into rifles. He would take old sporters, uh, ma- oh, excuse me, old Mauser rifles, and he would um, turn them into sporters. He would turn them into any caliber you th- you'd want. Right. Big shooter, big hunter. Every year he got an elk, an antelope, and a deer. Every year. Awesome. And near the end, the last few years of his life, uh, like the last 10 years, he was so frustrated with the NRA because it seemed like all they wanted was his money. Yeah. And he got so sick of them just constantly hounding him for money. Calls, uh, letters, everything. He, he just got sick of it. I'm not an NRA member. You're not? <gasps> Todd. I'm an NRA instructor, but I'm not an NRA not member. A member. <laughs> right? I can be an instructor and not be a member. I I, I, um, I think I joined for like a one year, 10, 15 years ago. And I haven't been. I'm not sure I ever joined. I have a real hard time giving money to lobby groups. I don't have money to give. <laughs> right. So yeah. besides that, lobby groups don't tend to like me very much. Yeah, we know about your history with Logger. <laughs> True. 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 So, here's a, I got a question for you. My wife, Valentine's Day is coming up. Oh, gosh. And uh, my wife wants us to go with another couple, and they want us to go to a concert oh, no. up in Utah. Oh, I'm so sorry. The concert will be fun. I'm not looking forward to Utah. Yeah. Utah's not my place. Yeah. But what always kills me in, in, about these concerts is, is as far as the uh, concealed carry options right, that right. you have for these concerts. You can't, even if the venue will uh, let you carry a firearm there, if it is allowed for you to take that inside, 
the uh, it seems like the artists, the whoever, the show, whoever's using it, um, they always have their own security there, and they always poke and broaden and searching through bags with sticks yeah. and running you through metal detectors, and you can't get crap. Well, you can. You can you get crap through. Yeah, you can't get firearms through. And uh, part of me wants to carry, and yeah. just to see if I can get in with it. Part of me says my wife would be awful pissed if I did. Right. Well, that'd be a great way to get out of it. I want to go to the concert. Though. You really want to go? It's a Bon Jovi concert. Okay. I know that's not your kind of music, Dean. Who else is? Uh, who is? Is there anyone else opening? I don't know. That you even know? Probably any, some any, crap. Yeah. Some crap band. Right. But uh, anyway, I'm excited to see Bon Jovi. Yeah, that's cool. I'm that's cool. Child that's cool. of the '80s. Yeah. So, yeah. um, one year we went up to Boise to go to a concert, uh-huh. and I had my little knife in my pocket. Okay. And uh, I noticed that they were wanding people, and they were <laughs> making you search in bags. And I'm thinking, we just stood in this line for like a half hour to right. get in. And I reached down, and I'm like, oh, crap. Right. I've got my $250 pocket knife with me. Was it this one? It was that one. Oh, the dart. The dart. Huh. Okay. So I <laughs> I shoved it. My, my wife caught me. I said, hey, give me your purse. And she's like, what do you need my purse for? I took the knife out. Uh-huh. I put it in the bottom of her purse, and I set my keys and her keys on top of it. So, and I, then you send her through the line ahead of you. Uh huh. Okay, so you take the burden off of you and give it to your wife and send her. She in doesn't there. look she, like she's going to be carrying anything. She, <laughs> and what they did is they started searching through her purse. Yeah. And they saw the keys, and the thing went. Bruh, 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 the little wand beeped. Uh huh. And they dug in there with the. And they saw keys, and they went, oh, keys, keys. okay, you're okay. good to go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like, I could have hit a freaking firearm in that thing. <laughs> they weren't x-raying it. They were just metal detecting is all they were, right? You, you you gave the contraband to your wife, so she'd take the fall. Yeah, she almost didn't give it back to me. <laughs> no blame her, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to walk back to the car. She said, well, what if they find us? I said, well, guess what? They just got another... They just got a brand new two hundred and fifty dollar knife. I hate that. Same thing. I, I've had that with TSA. I get on it. I get a, go to get on a plane. and I forget I have my pocket knife and just give it to him. Just give it to him. Like, I've done oh. that before. Yeah, it I was the that. knife that had my dad's uh, business company name on it that oh. we works for. Yeah, and I had to explain to him, hey, if you see this in that glass case that shows all the examples of what people tried to smuggle into this airport, <laughs> right. it says Wilbur Ellis. Oh, excuse me, it says the name of the company on it. <laughs> Guess what? That came That's from me. That's you. <laughs> Shoot. So, anyhow. Huh. So what? What do you do? How do you? You know, you're going to a, a place where you're going to be a soft target, but I don't know. I, I guess you know because security is is so tight at those places. Is it? You don't have to worry quite as uh, much. I still worry. Yeah. I was able to get a freaking pocket knife in. Yeah. I still worry. I still get concerned. So you just got to rely more on your situational awareness. Right. Um, but use I mean, your. Oodle loop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Oodle loop, which I, yeah, we're not gonna get into the Oodle loop again today. <laughs> but yeah, you, you rely on your situational awareness, your decision making skills, right? Um, pay attention to what's going on around you, right? Uh, which is kind of hard to do. There's a lot going on at concerts. There's a dark, it's light. People, you know, lights and lasers and crap, and yeah. people are drinking and moving around all the time, and you just. You got to kind of keep your head on a swivel. Still yeah. enjoy the show, but pay attention to what's going Situational on. Situational awareness, yeah. like you said. Yeah. And stay in groups. I mean, when you're leaving and you have to walk back to your car, you know, try not to take that shortcut through the alley, okay? Yeah. yeah. Stay in groups. Stay in groups of people. There's going to be law enforcement out. You do what you can do until you can get back to your car or wherever you have your firearm. I will right. have a firearm with me. Right. It just won't yeah, be, be with, with me. You. Yeah. It'll be it'll be locked up in my car, that, that kind of thing. So... Right. Here's another thing. Huh? If you're going to leave your firearm in your car, don't just leave it laying on the seat. Okay? Oh, right. Lock it up in a safe that's somehow attached to your car, whether that's bolted to the floor, chained to the floor, whatever. Right. Put it in a little car safe. Tuck it under the seat safely. Yeah. Safely away where um, people can't obviously see it. And if right. they do break into your car, they're going to have to actually work to get it. Right. Yeah. So they'd be responsible with it. You know, they make itty bitty little safes you can put them in, like a clamshell, and then they do. And then you can use your your trigger lock that comes with your uh, with your Mossberg. Uh, have you seen those things? Yeah. Mossberg sends those tri- trigger locks with them. It's a oh, it's a padlock with a big wire. You can use that and just uh, I've done that wire with, the thing around your seat. I've done that with uh, ammo cans. 
Yeah. And put a padlock deal on them. And yeah, yeah I've done that exactly. for yeah. a long time when I lived in Kansas. So that's right. how I, it's how I did it. So, yeah. but that's a huge headache if you lose a firearm. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and you know, just the, not even a headache, just the, the guilt of someone's got this firearm and now they might go do harm to somebody. They right. might go shoot someone. They might yeah. steal someone's money yeah. or whatever. When you get back to the moral dilemma, then you feel responsible for that. Right. Yeah. So be, be careful and you have to go to these places. I'll be going up there and I will enjoy myself. Um, if I'm not enjoying myself and I'm too worried about that, my wife will be pissed anyway. Well, so which this is the same wife that said, uh, was it Christmas? I don't need anything, Todd. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the one. Right. It's a trap. It is a trap. It's always a freaking it's trap. A trap. Always a trap. Yes. So I'm going to go up there and try to enjoy that concert. I'm going to be. Situationally aware. Situationally aware. That's right. Throw me to the wolves. I'm going to be unarmed. I'm going to feel naked. Right. I'm going to be naked at a Bon Jovi concert. Is what? that after what? that? Is that what you end up what? after the concert? Blue job. What? Oh, <laughs> exactly. Geez. Okay. Some came up today in my class, and I thought we'd touch. And I know huh? I've probably mentioned this. Okay, we're going to. Whoa, we're going to back the train up here. Huh? When I first started doing this podcast, it was just me. Mm-hmm. Just recently. Have I brought Dean on? Dean, you're my co-host. Right. I brought Dean on as co-host. And so uh, some of those first episodes, they are crap. They are 100% garbage. And I'm not saying what we do right now is fantastic, but it's way better than other crap. So I'm tied in with the moral dilemma right now. I'm trying to push the podcast. Right. I don't want people to tune into the podcast. Huh? Listen to the first few episodes and go, I'm not listening to this guy drone on and on by oh. himself. So I'm I'm actually slowly been kind of erasing some of the first episodes. Oh, really? Just to get caught up to ours. Yeah. So people don't go, this is boring, and listen to episode and one and cut it off and never go back. Yeah. And I'm sick of explaining to everyone, listen to the last five episodes. Listen to the last six episodes. Every week is one yeah. more. You know, so... Anyhow, I may or may not, I can't remember, have told about the experience I had where I've actually had to draw my firearm. I've actually had two experiences. Have I even told you about these, Dean? No, I haven't heard about this. Have you ever had to use your firearm for anything? Never have. No. Okay. No, I've never even had to pull a knife. I've never, nothing. I'll tell the story, and it gets, it's a little involved, okay? So hopefully you can keep up with me. Um, I was living in Kansas. I'd moved down there. I lived there for about six years, and... um, I was going fishing, and there's. A, I lived. I was in Kansas, but I lived in a small town, about 30, 200 people. But there's a lot of fishing, and you can go out into the, what they call the Flint Hills. It's not necessarily the mountains, not the desert, but it's just out about kind of in the countryside. Mm-hmm. And um, there was this river that I like to go fish, and I like to go down and catch catfish. And one day I took my daughter down there. Now, to get to this river, there was a road, a dirt road off of a main road, and this road would go down through and across the, the river and back up. And a lot of roads down there actually went through, not over, like through the little rivers. Okay, the country roads were all dirt. They weren't paved. Okay. And you could park down there, um, or you could come back up to the top and park at the top. Now, this road also cut to the left and dead-ended at this real sketchy-looking house that was down there. And I would always park up at the top because I was always afraid that we get a good rainstorm, the river would come up, and it'd flood you out before you could get out of there okay that happened all the time down there so i parked off to the side of the road me and my daughter and i can't even remember how my daughter chloe i can't even remember exactly how old she was she was young she was oh man she had to be she's 14 now she had to be like five or six i think six maybe so really little she was really little yeah and we went fishing we went down to the river i parked off to the side of the road um, unfortunately when I, when I pulled in, I kept my nose of my vehicle, my Tahoe I was driving a Chevy Tahoe aimed down the road and not back the way I needed to get out. I just pulled in and pulled off to the side. I walked down to the river. We did some fishing, waited up the river, did a bunch of fishing, had a good time, good time with my little girl, you mm-hmm. know, taking her fishing. We were all done and we were, I had my firearm with me. Of course I walked back up the hill from the river. We both did. And I'm walking toward my Tahoe, and I noticed that there's some cars coming from this house toward me. And uh, something didn't feel right about the situation. They just, something was sketchy. There were some odd people that lived out in the country over there. Some real odd people. There's a lot of, um, 
There was uh, whiskey stills. There was people oh, doing meth. Yeah. yeah. Meth labs. Pot. I mean, the brush was thick. It, you could get away with it down there. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah. um, there's some places that law enforcement actually never even went because they were scared. It was too dangerous. Really? And, yeah. And um, wow. I, got, I was walking up to my Tahoe, and these people were driving down the road. And as I got to the Tahoe, I was just about ready to open the door, and I parked the passenger side was down into the brush. Okay. Yeah. And I went around, I loaded the fishing poles up in the back of it, come back around these vehicles. There's like three vehicles, three or four vehicles. And they were coming up to me. And this lady was cackling at me. Where have you been? Where have you been? We've been looking for you. And this lady looked like something you'd see off Poltergeist. She was death warmed over. She, I hate that. She looked like a crack whore. She looked like an 80-year-old crack whore. Was she driving? She was, she was driving, and her face and her skin was all sucked in and she was nothing but bones and she just looked like a mess and she's laughing she was cackling like a freaking witch where have you been we've been looking for you i said oh i've been fishing i'm going home now well we've been looking for you and she's cackling and i was getting a little nervous at this point so i'd <laughs> reached over and i'd opened the driver's side door and my daughter's there next to me i had my gun on my right hip it was concealed obviously and um as that she kind of slowly said that. She said that she slowly drove by. And they were real close to me, like almost touching my door. And this other truck behind him was a Ford Ranger. And there was two of the biggest old bald-headed dudes that you'd ever seen wedged into this Ford. This is something right out of like the Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> and if you're familiar with that movie, oh, these were big old boys. They were a tiny 390 each of them. They were humongous. And they were twins. They had not a stitch of hair on their head. They looked exactly the same. Big old fat rolls on the back of their neck. They had dirty coveralls on, like suspender coveralls, and filthy wife beaters on, those yeah. tank white tank tops. Yeah. And they were just huge. And they pulled... I'm getting a little scared, even a little nervous telling it. They pulled up in this little Ford Ranger, and they stopped. And I continued to open my door to put my door between me and them. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. All the while, I opened this door. I got my left hand, and I'm working my daughter in around behind me. She doesn't right. know what's going on. Yeah. She's too young. She's oblivious. And yeah. I'm trying to shove her in. Uh, it's all happened so fast, but in my mind, it slows down. That's why I can tell you all these details. Huh. I'm working her behind me, shoving her up behind me over the driver's side seat to get to the passenger side of the vehicle. Right. Climb over the console, you name it. She's uh -huh. trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. And I'm shoving her in there. This truck pulls up, this Ford Ranger, these two big old boys in it. They, they stop. They put it in park. They're both their doors open. They both stand. I just still don't know what they're wanting. They both stand up to get out. And this truck, they're so big. When they get out of that truck, or start, <laughs> the whole truck races up. <laughs> I mean, it's just, they're huge. Yeah. I didn't even know if I could have stopped them with my firearm, to be 100% honest with you. Uh, not a 9 millimeter. Yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I, no, I no, kid, no. In all serious, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. That's what I'm saying. They were yeah. humongous. And they got up. They stood up. And as they stood up, Chloe, my daughter, I'd gotten her up into the Tahoe, and I could kind of see out of my peripheral she was in her seat. Okay. And I'm like, what do you guys want? And they got nothing. They just looked at me. And they started to walk around the doors. And at this point, I had my door open. My window to my Tahoe was up. I was with the doors between me and them. And I reached down and I put my hand on my firearm. They couldn't see it because the door was in the way. Uh -huh. But they could see the motion of me raising my shoulder up. And I put my hand on my firearm and I drew it up out of the holster. Okay, so it's up here, kind of by my chest. They still can't see it because the door's in the way, but it's up out of my holster in my hand. Uh -huh. Not pointing at them, but right. They saw that motion, and they st immediately stopped. They looked at each other. They sat back in their truck, gave me horrible, toothless grins. <laughs> I'm serious. This is something out of a scary movie. And drove by me. And as they drove by me, another vehicle behind them with the same crooked, wicked, twisted-looking people in it, Looked at me too, drove by me very slowly, and just watched me. And as soon as I got the chance, I jumped in my, my, my Tahoe, I closed the door, and then I realized I had to turn around. And so that was going to slow me down. So yeah. I started it, put it in drive, 
turned around really quick in that dirt road, and I thought they were going to head back out to the main road. Instead, they turned back around when they got to the main road and came back at me. And they were driving toward me and didn't give me any room on the road. Dang near pushed me off the road. I think they were trying to prove a point or something. Whatever. I still don't know what the heck they wanted. And then, so I, I drove down in the borrow pit, down the brush, back up around them on the road, and I never went back. Shit. I mean, holy cow. Yeah, it was it was freaking scary. I was I was shaking. I was driving home. And um I, I can I mean this happened oh my gosh. How long how long have you been living here, Dean? Uh five years. So I've been here a lot I've been here longer than I was here and then I moved to Kansas for six and then I've been here longer than you've been here again. Yeah. And so that was a long time ago and I still remember every detail very vividly to this day. And occasionally I will I'll just be thinking about it. I even go to sleep sometimes where I'm like just thinking about it and I just replay it over my mind. What could I have done? What could I have done? Yeah. And um, we never know what they wanted. I did talk to a sheriff's deputy about it once and I said, hey, this is what happened. What, what, what do you think was going on there? He goes, well, he goes, you were legal to be where you're at. He said uh, you they either had a whiskey steel, a meth lab. They had a pot growing somewhere, a pot grow in there somewhere, marijuana uh-huh. grow. And they didn't know where you were at. They saw your vehicle. They didn't know where you were at. They were probably at that dilapidated, run-down, white, you know, stalker-looking house down there. Yeah. And um, they didn't know where you were at. And and so they, they, they wanted to scare you. They were trying to get you out of there. Yeah. And they... I said, what would have happened had I not... He goes, I don't... He goes, I don't know. They were probably just trying to scare you. It scared the crap out of me. Right. Um. But everything worked out. I didn't have to obviously shoot anyone. I reholstered my firearm, got in the Tahoe, left, was a little sh- shaken up. But it could happen. I was just going out fishing with my daughter that day. That's yeah. all I was doing. And it's just, um, it's a scary deal. Yeah. A real scary deal. And then he, the officer, uh, deputy, whoever, he, he proceeded to tell me there's places out there the officers don't even go. The oh. deputies don't even go. There's some weird roads out there. You'd think you're on a main country road, which is a dirt road, and it would just dead end in someone's house. And you'd have to turn around, and they'd all come out and watch you. Right. And some of them, there were signs hanging on the fences, no pigs allowed, keep out, stay out, animal skeletal remains hanging off the fence. And you don't have any choice but to go in there, stop, and you couldn't turn around necessarily. So you'd have to go in there, stop, put it in reverse back up to turn around. Yeah. I um, mean, and, and they'd come out and watch you like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And you just thought this was a main road. I was scared lots of the time to actually go out in the country by myself in Kansas, in Kansas. So glad I live in Idaho. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I mean, there's bad stuff and bad people wherever you go. There's yeah. every place has their thing. Yeah. But, uh, that scared me to death. And, you know, and I keep asking myself, would I have, would I have pulled that trigger if I had you? You're dang right, especially because yeah. I had my well, daughter. Because you there. have your yeah, your five year old daughter. Especially because I yeah, I don't I have to sit down and talk to my daughter and see if she remembers any of that. You know, yeah. I never have asked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never. Uh, oh, what do they call it? Uh, debriefed. Yeah, I've happened, never. I don't know. If, I don't know if she would or not. Huh. Uh, I'd be interesting. I'd be. I and I'll talk to her and if she remembers any of it, it'd be interesting if she remembers enough of it to get her on here and just have her give her yeah, see what her her what take she on remembers. It. Yeah. yeah. Has she ever seen the Hills Have Eyes? No, okay. I don't think so. But there, I mean, they were some scary looking people there. Yeah. So I had one other instance where I had to, I went outside with my firearm uh-huh. because I was unsure what was going on. So I won't say exactly where I lived here, but I lived locally. Um, yeah, and this was in Idaho. This was in Idaho. And I, it was dark. And uh, we lived in a place that had an extra... It was on a big lot. It was separated. We lived in like the mother-in-law house that actually had separated. So it was its own piece of property, but there was a giant house next door that was empty and a farm that went with it. But that wasn't our property, but we were like right next to each other. And um, there's a pretty main road out in front of us. And I heard this noise uh, one evening. It's about 8, 39 o'clock at night. And I'm not saying these guys meant to do me harm. I'm not sure, but it was really unusual what happened. I heard some some just some like a loud car which yeah. that's not unusual yeah but i looked out because it just kept going by go down one mile you could hear it and see it and go in front of the house and you could hear it and see it and then it pulled over to where no one lived next to us and drove around the farmer's sheds and it was this huge like i don't even know exactly some four-door i call i'm going to call it a tuna boat it's huge it was like a big lincoln continental or 
some crazy huge long car, old car, uh-huh. and it was loud. Like it was missing some milk. It was, oh, it was loud. It was shaking the house. And as soon as they pulled over there, I kind of I knew the guy who owned that over there, but no one lived there, and I just kind of wanted to keep an eye out. So I didn't go out looking for trouble. I just stepped outside to see what was going on. I went out there, had my T-shirt on, on my basketball shorts on, and I grabbed my I grabbed my um, my Glock, my G19, uh-huh. and it was loaded, and I was careful with it. It wasn't in a holster because I'm wearing basketball shorts, and yeah. I had it in my hand, and I kind of tucked my hand with that firearm into my the pocket. Yeah, you know, and I'm standing there just to see what's going on. I didn't want to scare anyone or bother anyone if they were legitimately supposed to be there. Yeah, you know, it's crazy, some crazy guy with a gun. Anyhow, they they saw me and they roared back up and down the road a few times. I'm kind of standing in my driveway watching them, going, "Man, these guys are nuts. They're gonna kill someone. They're just going like nuts." And all of a sudden, they come back down the road and they they tore into my driveway. And you know where I'm talking, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They I tore into this. my driveway and they had their brights on. And I, when someone has their brights on you, you can't see anything. Right, you're blind. Yeah, I'm blinded. By the light. I'm yeah. blinded by the light. Um, and I'm like, I really can't see anything. And I, all I hear, is I see four doors open, and four guys get out, and they come walking toward me. And I'm thinking, I'm at a disadvantage right now. I can't see anything. I'm yeah. standing here. There's four of them. I can't even tell. I couldn't see their faces. I couldn't tell you anything about them. Just there, there are four guys. I could tell they were guys. They got out, and I said, "Can I help you?" And they looked at me, and they kind of looked at each other, and they went, "Have you seen our cows? Our cows are out. We're looking for our cows. Have you seen our cows?" I'm like, "There's no cows around here. These are these are farmer fields. There's no cows yeah. around here right this is now. This agriculture, not not dairy. Yeah, I don't. There's no cows right here." And he's like, but our cows are out. We were, we we're looking for our cows. And they kept kind of walking toward me. And I actually pulled my hand out of my my pocket with the G19 in it and just kind of held it by my side. I said, I haven't seen your cows, your cattle, your animals. I haven't seen anything here. And they just stopped. They looked at each other. They got back in their big old car and roared off down the road. Didn't say a word, left. Never. I've never seen that car I lived there for many years after that. Never saw that car. Never heard. You could hear the car. You, I know yeah. which one it was. Never saw it. Never heard it roaring up and down the road. Never anything. Absolutely nothing. So I don't know if they were legitimately looking for some kind of lost critter or not. But the fact that they saw me when I when I pulled my gun out of my pocket and they got in their car and roared off and I haven't never saw that car since just leads me to believe that... M- who knows what they were doing? I have no idea. I have no explanation for that. It's never happened again. I asked some neighbors. They never have seen them. They never had trouble. Like I don't know. I have no idea. Dang, Todd. Scary, huh? Yeah. So I can tell you right now, don't ever confront me because I will have a firearm <laughs> on me. Yes. Okay, except right now. Except for right now. I got knives. We got yeah, knives and a broken knives, revolver. And a broken uh, three fifty seven. Yeah. Yeah. And a hammer. And a hammer. What well, you looking around? I got a drill. Oh yeah, there's a and uh what else do I got? A stud finder. Got a grenade. <laughs> and a dummy grenade. I got it's not a dummy. I could throw that at someone. Yeah, like a big rock. Okay. Yeah. But any have you seen this? Here. You, you showed me. Play you showed, with I'm it. good, I'm good. I'm no, no I'm playing with, with yeah. I'm gonna pull yeah. the pin with my teeth in it. It's a, it's about as useful as carrying a, a firearm without one in the chamber. It's kinda like a high point. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> So, anyhow, that's my stories, and I'm not saying that's why, I mean, that is why I carry now. That's not what started me on carrying. I was carrying way before then. And good thing you were carrying before then. Yeah, and it's just, I don't know, They everyone, you know, I won't say everyone, but uh, some people have their scary stories, and that was my scary story, and it uh, made me look at things a little different. I really am careful when I see people. I live, where I live right now, I have a, I literally, my driveway is half a mile long. Yeah. Now, I have some neighbors that live on it too, but they live further down, and then you probably got almost a quarter mile from the last house to my house. Yeah. And um, so if someone comes down here, I know there's farmers, there's some farmers that use the road, I know who they are. And if someone comes down here, I guarantee, and I'm home, I will meet you out in the driveway. You're not yeah. coming up to the house. And yeah. I will have a gun on me. Whether I have it out or not, I doubt. But there will be a gun on me somewhere. Yeah. I've had people show up, turn around, and leave. And I think maybe sometimes they think that we're we're someone else's house, and they they like come down here at dead ends, and like, oh crap, I shouldn't right. be here. Or they, they thought the road went through, or something, or yeah. something. But I will meet you out in the driveway, 
every true. time. True. I guarantee. Yeah. I sit in my living room with the shades up, and I can watch the TV and see who's coming. It's just the way I live my life. It's not like you're sitting on the porch just waiting for someone to show up. Right. right. No, I'm situationally no, no. aware. I know yeah. what goes on. I know who should be down here. I know the guy yeah. that works the field next to me. I know the who the ditch rider is and when he shows up. I yeah. mean, I've only lived here a year, but I know all this stuff because I yeah. pay attention to what goes What's on around on? me. Yeah. So... Other than that, no scary situations for you? <laughs> Do you have any situations that'll be The only that? situations that I've been in that were scary were because of my own stupidity. Because I was a jackass and... and caused them? And caused them, yeah. Like, so, like, I was delivering... <clears throat> I used to work for Pizza Hut, delivering pizzas. Um, and I lived in the uh, eastern part of, of, of the state in a town not unlike well, where we are now. Uh, it was Pocatello. And I was looking for an address, and I couldn't find. This is before we had GPS, right? And, you know, and smartphones and all that. So I was doing it the old-fashioned way with a map. <laughs> and I was going twenty-five and a thirty-five, and I had these guys that were just tailing my, tailing me, you know, uh-huh. ride, riding me. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm not paying attention. Then I look in my rearview mirror, see these guys. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna give them a brake check. <laughs> I give them a brake check, and then. I found my address, and then I turned to the apartment complex. And the guy that was right behind me... Pulled in, too? Pulled in, too. Yeah, and I pulled around the complex a couple times, (laughs) circling it. He followed you, He followed me until he pulled right in front of me, stopped and got out and comes up and starts yelling foul language at me, telling me, you know, this, that, and the other. and Road rage. Road rage. He was very angry. And if if I had been allowed to, um, to carry, I would have pulled my weapon at that point. But I didn't. Right. I mean, just... Kind of stayed in the car, kept kept didn't get out, didn't confront him. I just, uh, well, that car was a piece of crap, and I couldn't roll down the windows because it was the car was falling apart. But I opened it up just a little bit so I could talk to him, but I did not get out. And yeah, crazy, crazy. He followed me all the way back to the Pizza Hut and uh, and yelled at the the manager about about your me. driving skills, my driving skills. Yeah, and oh, he was using foul language. Oh, Terrible. give him a foul free pizza; right it'll like, shut him up. Like, oh my gosh! What he a... obviously had nothing better to do. Yeah, obviously. So yeah, I, so that's your situation. I yeah. had my two situations. Then actually, I didn't have another. I had another situation. It ha- didn't happen to me. It was to my wife, and she she had a firearm on her. I had mm-hmm. just left for work. I leave. I led, left for work early in the morning, like at three o'clock in the morning. Got to almost to where I was going to work, and my wife calls me and says, oh, my gosh, what do I do? There's someone pounding at the door. And she she had woke up because I woke up and I got ready. She goes, someone is pounding at the door. And she goes, I peered out the window. And granted, this is when you went to work Yeah, really, really early. Really, really early. Yeah. So before I go to work, and I'm kind of anal about this, even in the summertime, I will go out and I will warm my vehicle up. It's yeah. what my dad taught me years ago. I'll let it warm up for five, ten minutes. It's just what I do. Let that oil gap, you know. Yeah. Right or wrong, I don't know. It's what I do. Right. So I would go out in the driveway. I would start the vehicle. I'd go back inside. And sometimes I'll eat breakfast, depending on how cold it is. And then I'll go back out there. Vehicle's warm, windows yeah. defrosted, whatever, yeah. whatever I need. So, But that morning, I'd started it. I'd went inside, and I'd come back out, and I left. I honestly think so. Here's what here's what my wife said happened. Um, not too long after I left, um, she heard some pounding at the door, and she looked out the window, and there was a guy with a black backpack. She never she never saw his face. Black pants, black backpack, black hoodie with the hood pulled up over his... Did I tell you about this? Yeah, yeah, you told me Yeah, about with this, the yeah. hood pulled up over his head and kind of down around his face, and he was pounding on the door. She never talked to him. She never let him in. Well, and the, another thing, you were in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. This house was in the middle of nowhere, yeah. so there is never any pedestrian traffic through well, there. Well, and what creeps me out is, is honestly... I think, and she didn't have any lights on. Honestly, I think there was lights on when I was there. I think, I think that he, whoever it was, it maybe wasn't a he, maybe it was a she. I don't know uh-huh. that this individual saw me, and I think that they saw me because they could have been easily out on the road somewhere, yeah. and I wouldn't have seen. And I think that they saw me when I warmed my vehicle up, and I think they saw me when I got in the vehicle and I left, because that's when they showed up. Yeah, I mean. 
I would have been a beacon out there. The lights on, car lights on. Right. And it's flat. Why would, if you needed help. No trees around. Yeah. If nothing you in the middle of nowhere. If you needed yeah. help, why wouldn't you have approached me then? Right. Why would you approach my house after I leave when the lights are off, pound on the door, unless you're up to no good? Yeah. Right? Right. You need a ride. You need gas money. You need help. Hey, look. Somebody is awake over here at this house. I've seen them outside at their vehicle. Yeah. Steal my car or come up to me and ask for whatever you need. Yeah. So... She calls me, says this is happening, says she looked out the window, this is who it is. <laughs> I love my wife to death, but we aren't always on the same wavelength. She asked me, what do I do? What do I do? I said, oh my gosh. I said, call the police. Right? I said, I said, I, I didn't want to get her upset. So I said, I said, get your gun. It's loaded. Get your gun. You have your gun. Go grab the kids because they're spread all over the house. Yeah, this house yeah. had a horrible setup for bedrooms. Grab the gun, grab the kids, take them all back to your room, and call the freaking police. I said, is he still at the door? He's like, no, he left. I kind of saw him walk walk off. I said, well, that doesn't mean he's gone. Right. Okay, and we do have other people that live on that road, not right next door, but on that road. I said, you need to call the police. You need to call the sheriff's department and tell them what's going on, and you need to tell them um that this person has left tell them the direction he went they need to come check it out because we do have neighbors to a certain extent yeah yeah well like a couple hundred yards down yeah quarter mile down but there's yeah. people there you yeah. know if he's wandering around doing this he may just hit up the next house yeah and i have nothing against law enforcement at all but the saying is true that when you need them, when seconds matter, they're 10, 15 minutes away. Especially right. when you live in the county, I don't expect them to be everywhere at once. That's why I believe in firearms and protecting yourself if yeah. you absolutely have to. I understand that. We are the first responders. Yeah. That's just the way it works. Right. They, But what I don't get is they. my wife talked to him on the phone, and um, they came out supposedly. She could hear them on the radio walking around the house. I didn't want my. I told my wife, I said, "Don't go outside. They will knock on the door. They'll, they'll let you know what they find." Yeah. They. She heard them walking around the house. We have rocks all the way around the house, like a rock flyer. But she heard them walking through there. She heard the dogs bark, and then nothing. She thinks it was them. They didn't announce their presence. They didn't announce they didn't, their presence. They, they didn't, didn't knock say, on hey, the it's door. All clear. Things they are okay. They didn't call her on the phone. They just. Were there and supposedly there, and then they weren't there. So they ended up falling asleep, all of them in our bedroom on our bed, and woke up, and that was that. Scary still. Scary still. You yeah. don't know. I'm sure that was them she heard. I'm sure it was. Yeah. I don't. I mean, there's there's a little bit of doubt in my mind, but there's 99% of me says it's it was them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But. Anyhow, she did right. She didn't open the door. She didn't try to talk to him. She didn't try to make contact with whoever was pounding on the door. And even when she assumed that might be law enforcement out there, she didn't go outside. Let them do their job. Yeah. She did She did Don't well. Don't get in the way. Yeah. She did well. I wish she would have called 911 before she called me. Yeah. Uh, I still want to know what's going on. And we, we talked about that. I think she was just caught off guard. That's never yeah. happened before. What do yeah. I do? What do I do? What do I do? You know? And uh, so she did right, and uh, that was about the that was the same house where the people pulled up in the big Lincoln Continental, opened their doors, and blinded me with their lights and stuff. So yeah. I don't know. Pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting. Right. I'm just kind of waiting for the next experience at this point. The, the next crazy to happen. Yeah. True. It could happen on my way from the war room to the house. We don't right. know. <laughs> with your new dog. <laughs> with my new dog. He'll come up and just just pee himself because he's so excited <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> So, anyhow, well, that's kind of a heavy show today, Todd. It was kind of a heavy show. Yeah. I, I I liked. I've told those stories, most of those stories, on the radio, and and I think I might have thrown them on the podcast. But we got a few new listeners, so I thought yeah. I'd just throw them out there again. And and I'd like to get. I keep telling people are going to think I'm lying. I'd like to get some listeners on the show. Yeah, to tell their stories. Uh, to tell their stories if they have stories. Yeah. And I don't want to. And we could start with mine. We could even think about mine and talk about it next episode. I don't care. Um, what what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? These are all learning things. I think about these situations every single day and think of, okay, how could I have handled that better? Nothing yeah. went wrong. No one got hurt. But what did I do wrong? What one of the things that pops up to me is in Kansas and my with my daughter when we were fishing, I could have turned my car around. Yeah. So I didn't have to, to get out. I, yeah. To get out. Yes. To get out because they could have easily 
They could have easily have, 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 have boxed me in there. Yeah. You know, and, and the ground over there, because it rains all the time, is always very muddy. And I guarantee you, if I got off that road, I would not have got far. <laughs> but, you know, that's one of the things I could have done. Um, my wife knew, uh, she knew we were going fishing, and she knew the name of the creek, but she didn't know where. Right. She was unfamiliar with the area. She wasn't, we only lived there a couple of years. It was relatively new to us. So that's, that's a deal, too. She could have known where I was at. Um, I could have told her, someone else, something. I mean, I don't know what else I could have done. I'm guilty of this, too. Whenever I go for a bike ride, I don't know exactly where I'm going to go beforehand. I just tell my wife, hey, I'm heading to Hagerman. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm heading north this time. Maybe I'll go to Gooding or right. wherever. <clears throat> but it's good to let somebody you're know. know exactly where you're going. Yeah. The be- the, you know, the best that you can, at least with cell phones nowadays. Yeah, you now know, you can, can have find your friends. Or, and, yeah. Yeah, they can ping you and all, all kinds of stuff. But yeah. no one knew where I no one knew where I was at. Yeah. So I don't know. That's kind of what I've, and maybe I shouldn't have left my house to try to, maybe those guys would not have pulled into my driveway at that, on the second story had I not come out of the house. Yeah. I maybe if I would have just stayed in the house, they would have, I think... I honestly think they pulled into my driveway because they saw me. I have no idea what they wanted. Maybe they were really looking for their cows. I have uh, no clue. Uh, who knows? Didn't, wasn't that an old dairy down the road from you? But there's yeah, no but cows it, down but there. Yeah, but it sold out. There yeah. was nothing there. So I have no I have no idea what they wanted. So I'm True. sure I could have played that. You can always look back in hindsight. Hindsight's 2020 20 and, yeah. and and think you, did, you could have done something better, could have done something different. If you're listening right now and you want to critique it, I don't, I'm, I'm all, I'm all, I'm okay with it. Critique it. Right. Get a hold of me. Yeah. We want to hear from you guys. Yeah. We'd love to hear some kind of feedback. We've got some feedback and that's fantastic. If you've yeah. got my number and you've text messaged me or you found me on Facebook, that's fantastic. You can under Patriot defense on Facebook. Yep. That's the email address. I'll give that out in just a second. You can find me on Patriot defense, Facebook page. Um, there's two flags and an arm and a hand holding the firearm. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty easy to find like the page. Right. You can message me there. You can, I'm going to throw this out there. You can call me and text me if you want. The number's everywhere. Right. Yeah. My phone number is area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. Get a hold of me there. I'm constantly on that thing, texting. I had some guy call me up last night. He was kind of interested in a class, but he called me because he wanted to tell me um, a story about a firearm that he had. He had heard me talking on the radio, huh? and he just wanted to... to shoot the breeze with me oh how fun and so we t- i talked to him for about 20 minutes on the yeah. phone oh no oh, that's funny talked Tom. about guns some stuff that happened yeah. to his firearm and he wanted to know the experience of i that i've had with mine and uh-huh. we talked about shooting and hunting and i don't even know this guy it's fantastic i like helping people i like talking to people call me up i'll i'll talk to you <laughs> that's hilarious and you if you do want to send an email you can do that too at, uh, send that email to patriotdefense13 at yahoo.com. That's patriotdefense13 or 13 at yahoo.com. Um, shoot me an email there and I'll make sure I text or I check my trash folder just to make junk sure stuff's yeah, right. junk mail, whatever. Yeah, we'll, I'll probably going to look. I haven't looked at that in a long time. I'll probably look yeah. at there. Probably be 400 emails or something. Right. And they're all from Japan. Yeah, Japan. <laughs> we have listeners in Japan. We haven't got any new countries so far. No. So maybe this one. Will reach new countries. Right, great. So, anyhow, get a hold of us there. Let us know um, what you think. Criticize me. Maybe you want to be on the show. I still have an extra mic that's not taken right. out of the box yet. Or maybe we can get a like, like put your phone on speaker and we can have a caller. I gotta figure out. There's got to be a better way to do that. And I'm gonna. There's got to be a way to plug it into your. I'm gonna. Your I'm gonna. Jack. I'm gonna research yeah. it. We'll figure it out. We'll True. figure something out. True. So I think um, in a couple Saturdays, I think Eric from Napa is gonna come on. The manager at Napa? The manager, the auto parts manager at Napa. That's right. He so. on a dart. <laughs> <laughs> this knife is called a dart. Anyhow, <laughs> Dean's playing with all the knives over there. I got it. No one gets a free hat. He hasn't cut himself yet. Right. Yeah. I keep expecting him to do that that deal where you Russian roulette where you stick your hand out oh, and you go tink 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 from tink, uh, tink, yeah tink. from Alien yeah yeah. <laughs> I'm not Bishop. I'm I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> So, anyhow, I think we're done here. I need to go shower. I've been in the range all day. I need to eat. I need to sit down. I need to watch some TV. So true. I got to help my daughter move tomorrow. So I got to, yeah, not just some other one of the other daughters. Oh, okay, okay. So anyhow, true. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Share right. it with your friends. Rate and review and give us five 
Five stars. Freaking and then, stars. And then the, the 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 world comes into alignment, and there will be world peace. No more nukes in North Korea. And uh, and Dean will show up and, for our uh, next show. True. Okay. See you later. Bye. So here we go. We're gonna give us a try. Dean's over there playing with ovaries. The <laughs> damn doctors. <laughs>